There's no. Oh. Hello, everyone. <laughs> this is so funny. I I was hoping to put a little um, start screen so everyone knows what this is about. Uh, but it seems like we are on and live. And I'm so happy to welcome Alicia here again. Hi, everyone. Very, Good to see very you. Very faithful ally in these uh, Facebook lives. And we also have Christina uh, helping us in the background. Um, I made Christina really busy this morning because I usually prepare and uh, she was helping me with um, getting some of the materials ready. And to be honest, I never know what is uh, waiting in store for me on the morning of preparing because sometimes it's really easy and sometimes I discover these really neat things that I want to share with you and then I get a little behind. Uh, but I'm glad that we are here. And uh, we will also have um, an opportunity to take some of you online. If you do uh, know Zoom and if you're familiar with Zoom, we will be able to welcome you to this screen and uh, we'll ask you to, to post a comment or request in the comment and we'll send a private message how to get to uh, this platform on Zoom. Alicia, how are you feeling today? Feeling good. Very excited yeah. about talking about hair Q tests because we do get a lot of questions about it. So um, it's great to be able to dive in and for all of us to learn more about it today. Cool. So I'll be I'll be sharing my screen here and there, and um, and um, and also I will I will make sure that there's not just slides. Um, the reason why. I named uh, this whole session, there is a message in your dog's hair, is that there truly is a message in your dog's hair. And um, when I was going through some of the hair analysis results this morning, and I wanted to show you why I use it and, and, and how helpful and useful it can be, I was just completely thrilled and excited and at the same time overwhelmed by the, the amount of information that I could get actually just from one set of results. So what I was doing today, I was I took the results and then I kind of looked at the history of the of the particular dog that we collect before we send send a, a hair out. And um, and it was fascinating. And I know that most people run the test because they want to know. They want to know if, um, if their dog's diet is complete. They want to know if there is, uh, if there's anything that they can do. And, you know, when I was preparing this morning, I was, um, I was, I ran across this, uh, I ran across this picture and I thought this is exactly why we so try to do so much for our dogs and why we constantly search for new ways to improve their health and, and make them live longer. I took this picture um, a couple of years ago in Prague when I was visiting my family. And this guy was just completely, completely enamored by his dog. And I recently posted it on Facebook and it had so many likes and, and, and positive response because it's undeniable. This guy loves his dog and his dog is so proud of being his dog as well. So it's just like this bond, this connection that is, that is really sweet. And, and I wanted to share this picture with you. Um, you know, the most common question that I get on Facebook or Instagram or in email uh, is what food shall we feed and what food is good and how to make it balance and and that's the question that we've been asking for decades and probably even centuries I, I don't really know what people did with dogs 100 years ago or 200 years ago but I'm sure that they had very strong connections and when you go into some historic paintings or even documentaries we know that dogs had always have always had a very important role in our life and feeding them is also an expression of love. Uh, if you've been to Italy or if you have um, any relatives that like to feed you or feed others, you know that, that this is their way to say, I love you. 
And uh, our way to say to our dogs, I love you, is to feed them good food. And some people get busy and, uh, and they may not be able to feed it, you know, homemade diet or raw diet. They may feed kibble. And I know some of you do. This is not to shame you or anything. This is just to say that today we're going to learn a little bit more about how to discover what your dog is missing or what is in excess, um, if there are any toxins and how to kind of use a very simple test to figure out um, uh, where your dog is at. Um, you know, there are many different ways of um, uh, testing our dogs. Some of, it, some of it is a very thorough analysis of, um, of blood, but the blood is almost like a snapshot of time. It's like a blink uh, because blood changes constantly and it changes based on the external environmental influences, but also how the body does. And it doesn't say anything about whether your dog's food, or whether your dog's food is depleted or not. It's like I give you an example. You come to uh, someone's house. I lived in the Eastern Bloc uh, for 27 years, so I know how it used to be. Uh, we had visitors, and we would basically serve them anything, everything that we had in the fridge. But there was possibly nothing left in the fridge after the visit, right? And they didn't know that. And blood sample is like that. Blood sample is the dinner table. It gives you an exam, example of the snapshot at the time, but you don't really know what the storage looks like, whether your dog is not missing or is, is depleted in iron or manganese or magnesium. Hi, Pax. <laughs> Pax came to say hi here. Hi, do you want to say hi? Come, come, come on. Are you busy? Okay, he says no. Um, anyway, uh, so, so blood sample doesn't tell you whether there is depletion of storage. It only tells you what is on the table or in the bloodstream. And that's super important for you to remember because people say, well, you know, I took a blood sample and my dog is fine and all the organs are okay. But do you know whether you're running on reserve or your dog is running on reserve or not? No. And, and that's why we need to get more than the snapshot. Now, there are some other way of analyzing our, our tissues and, and, and organs and so on. And I've learned about it when I worked in research in early part of my career before I came to Canada. I actually worked uh, with um, in the field of equine exercise physiology. We were measuring um, the biochemistry of the muscles of horses. And we actually had to collect uh, biopsy samples of the muscles to analyze them and see where they, these horses were. Um, obviously, we use anesthetics and all that stuff, but it was pretty drastic and dramatic, like, you know, collecting these pieces. So it wasn't really efficient way of, uh, I wouldn't want my dog to be biopsy just to find out whether there is, you know, what the storage of, let's say, iron is or something like that. So then there is a, I came across a very simple method, and it was actually my, my Austrian colleague, uh, Eva, who spent... Uh, a year in my practice in the mid 2000s. Uh, she's a holistic vet and she now has a thriving practice in Austria, but she came to me with the idea of, of using hair testing in my practice. And I'm very grateful to her because since then, we've taken thousands and thousands of samples and we have been able to um, discover many things. Uh, what food is uh, not <laughs> good for our dogs? <laughs> Boxy. So you now you have to show up. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> oh my goodness. What are we going to do? Say hello. Now we have to now we have to tell them all about hair testing. Hi Pax. It's going to be. <laughs> He's not very thrilled right now. <laughs> like, Daddy, I have things to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, um so, so hair testing is an interesting way of analyzing, analyzing, uh, you know, our dog's body and diet and see, see uh, what is missing. Now, there are 37,000 billion billion chemical reactions in the body every second. Every second, that many chemical reactions take place. 
And it's, it's a number that I repeat over and over and over, but I think that it's helpful to repeat it because it gives us an idea and sense how important it is for our dogs to have all the building blocks. I often say that, you know, we all know that when we go to the garden and it's not fertilized, it looks a little wilted or not strong or the tomatoes or the produce and the vegetables don't grow very well. Most people say, okay, you know, we need to actually add some natural nutrients, ideally organic and it'll grow again. But we forget that our bodies and our dog's bodies are the same. And um, it all really starts with the hated periodic table. <laughs> I used to hate this <laughs> with passion, but then I learned how miraculous and mysterious all this is, not only from the point of nutrition, but also from the point of homeopathic treatment and other holistic approaches to, to healing, uh, because in this table, many of the principles of health are hidden. It's almost like a puzzle that you need to de uh, decipher. And believe it or not, our dogs cannot make one single of these elements. And these elements power the 37,000 billion, billion, billion chemical reactions in the body every second. And so if there's one element missing or two elements missing, or if they're depleted, some of these chemical reactions will start slow down and will not happen and will not take care of, of the body and maintenance of the organs and everything else. So the body will wither away and that's how disease starts. And eventually that's how we die, that the systems are not able to keep up. Um, most people, don't realize how important this is. And I didn't really know how many human doctors or how many veterinarians will ask you, so are you giving your dog any minerals or let's check your dog mineral levels, um, dog's mineral levels. It's, it's not gonna happen very often. And, and this is one of the biggest challenges that you know how we sometimes look for some sort of really complex cause of disease, like most of the time, right? Like, you know, I'm sure that if you take your dog in and your dog has skin disease or organ disease, like you go through battery of tests and, 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 and ultrasounds and CT scans and MRIs and all that stuff. And then we forget the simple stuff that is so easy, so easy and gives us so much information. It's painful to watch. And this is why I am, I'm sitting here and I, why, I'm, why I'm talking to you. So um, I would like to go, uh, go to the natural principles of nutrition first. And you may have seen this chart, but I will repeat it for those who have not seen it. Um, some time ago, we created this little circle of nutrients, cycle of nutrients. Um, in nature, the cycle is closed from soil to grass, to herbivores, to carnivores, to vultures and some sort of scavengers, and then back to the bacteria and soil. And those nutrients are staying pretty much at one place. However, in our modern time, uh, we transport nutrients at long distances. We transport food at long distances. I always use the example of tomatoes in California going up to Canada where sometimes tomatoes don't grow as well in the winter. And, um, and then the tomatoes are eaten. And then guess what happens with the tomatoes? Well, you know, I'm gonna bypass that, that, that <laughs> how would I say the less sightly part, but ultimately it ends up with manure and it should end up in the soil. But in, in our case, if the tomatoes are transported from California to Canada, best case scenario, it's, it, it ends up in compost in Canada. I have not seen any semi trucks and containers going down to California replenished in nutrients. And this is why we are having serious, serious, serious problem with recycling of nutrients. We have depleted food that the depletion is increasing and our disease state is increasing, whether it's our dogs or ourselves. And I know that some of you may say, well, you know, how do you know that? Well, I know that because I've seen many dogs and many dogs that get actually boosted and supplemented with nutrients that they're missing. Suddenly people come back or people write us messages and say, 
I can't believe what just happened. And I say, it's just simple. I almost feel embarrassed how simple it is. You know, when you look at um, this image, um, is there anything weird on it? Some of you will probably figure it out very quickly that there is an in engine missing right on the plane. This morning I was thinking I should remove the other engine so it's more clear. The thing is that when there is something super important missing, the plane is not gonna fly. When there's something important missing in your dog's body, in our body, disease will happen. And so, as I said, the simplest principles of health and longevity are often missed. And I will repeat this message as long as I live, if it's necessary to kind of guide you onto some of the easier, less expensive and also emotionally less costly ways of maintaining your dog's health. And we kind of know that life is a cycle and we know that our dogs will not be here forever. But I think our goal and our ability at this point in time is to expand the, the health span. We are able to actually extend the quality of life and health of our dogs. And I will relentlessly and tirelessly work on it further. We are doing some more planning and research on that level of on level of longevity and, and, and body energy and just kind of move through the whole spectrum of, of, of um, areas that you can really easily um, improve. I rarely blow my whistle, but this morning I was thinking, you know, instead of me saying how, how important it is to supplement minerals, I just wanted to give you some examples of what people say and what people experience, right? It's, um, it, it, it's many people say that, that suddenly they see more vitality and healthier coat and fresher breath and, and spark in their dog's eyes. And, and that's something that I started to see in the early days when I acknowledged the fact that maybe our food is depleted, maybe we should start giving some nutrients that, that, that they are not getting. Another um, message here for one of our community members. Um, um, this dog suffered from seizures for many, many years ago and she changed, to, she changed the diet and she started supplementing the diet and the dog has been four years seizure free. So, you know, when you try to control medical condition and, um, and it's not going away and you're using all the scientific methods or, or treatment protocols that we are told to use and things are not working, I think that we need to, we are obligated as veterinarians to search for something else. And, and I, I like to be a little bit of detective. I, I, you know, it's, it's, I learned a lot of things from my clients and my patients, and I don't really take credit for much of what I'm presenting here. I think that these are just basic principles of nature and I just use them and, and try to apply them. So um, uh, there is, um, there's, once again, to repeat, there's 37,000 billion billion, 37 with 21 zeros, chemical reactions happening every second in the body. And we need to power our dogs. But there is another problem. And you know, every Pax is scratching at the door here. I don't know what he wants to do. <laughs> he decided to be a little bit of a disturbing element uh, today. I, I walked him early morning and then I was preparing everything. So um, maybe he actually wants a bone. I'm just going to see if I can. <laughs> and while Dr. Tobias is um, taking care of Pax and giving him a bone, if you haven't checked out our website yet, please do. It's petertobias.com and Hair Q Test um, does show up in the store to find out all of this great information after the live broadcast. I, I'm sorry, you know, uh, I have to apologize, but uh, in our company and kind of in my life, uh, we say that dogs are the top priority. So whether I'm broadcasting live or not, uh, I have to make sure that my pup is okay. And he was just being a little bit of a silly monkey. So it's all good. Anyway, um, every, you know, every, every, everything has um, a contrast. Everything has, uh, everything has um, two sides. Um, 
every movie movie has the hero and the villain or some sort of controversy and so on and even in 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 metabolism even in in um hair analysis, there are the villains and uh, the villains represent uh, the toxins or the toxins represent the villain, villains in this case. Um, toxins, I see toxins like, um, like, uh, like really like the villains in a movie or I see them as something that is added and should not be there. The animal come visitor in our dog's bodies, in our bodies. Um, I am just checking. Uh, I'm not sharing a screen and I wanted to. I got this picture this morning. I thought, you know, it would be really hard to ride a bike like that, right? <laughs> and sometimes it's really hard to be in a body that is toxic and has a lot of chemicals and there's a lot of things added that should not be there. And we made gazillions of different substances in the past um, few centuries uh, that are toxic and foreign, right? And they basically embed in our body, they compete with the uh, healthy minerals, they basically create a havoc with the biochemistry of the body. Uh, the other thing is, I know that some of you may actually say it's okay, but I would probably not want to drive a car like this. <laughs> because, uh, again, you know, there's too many things, too many things added. And I think that the steering and all the instruments would probably not be as easy to reach. Um, and ultimately, a toxic body can be compared to something like that. You know, I, I, I have not seen a room like this in person, even though I have a few nephews and nieces as teenagers, it's not as bad as this. But uh, <laughs> this is what I think the body feels like when it's really toxic. Um, you know, sometimes I eat something that is not very healthy. We all have those moments. And then I go, man, like, how can people eat that every day? Like, they don't even know how they feel. So the toxins, you know, toxins take over. And interestingly enough, they actually have the ability to take over the, uh, the, the, the spots where the, the seeds, where the healthy mineral should, should, um, should live or latch onto the cells and the receptors in the body. So it's really important to realize that, that in order for us to create health, we need to discover or we need to see where our dog is, like what are the toxin ratios to the healthy elements? What are the healthy elements? Are there, are there any deficiencies? Is there too much or too little and so on? And, and also looking at the relationships. And from those relationships, we're able to derive some conclusions and also make adjustments in our dogs diet or lifestyle or what uh what um you know what um food they're getting so i've explained kind of why hair analysis but i would like to actually explain a little more in detail why the hair is so good for anal being analyzed and why it gives us almost like a little time capsule of mineral content in our dog's body in our own body I don't have much hair, but I am going to actually, I'm planning to collect a hair sample for Pax and I next week. I'm gonna to have to collect uh, for a few days. Um, but, but it is super important to, to understand why I recommend hair testing and why I've been so passionate about it. Uh, so um, here is a, another screen share. Um, so we talked about the blood and we talked, it's like the table that you see full of food or maybe the table doesn't have any food. You kind of see the snapshot, but you don't know what is in the fridge. The hair is the fridge for the body because it actually gives you an idea what's been happening in the body for several months, okay? So it gives you an idea how full the fridge has been <laughs> for the last three or four months. The hair is bathed in plasma. There are blood supply, there's blood supply, there's, there's all this connection to the rest of the body. And as the hair grows up, it actually seals the plasma in and it gives you a really good idea what the content of minerals and toxins in the body has been over a long period of time. It will not give you feature, but it will give you the past. It's almost like you take a picture of your fridge every day and say my fridge has been either empty or full, right? Or there is like too much 
uh, too many tomatoes and not enough, um, not enough oil or something like that, right? Uh, so remember that the hair is like a storage for, for your dog's um, minerals and, and uh, toxins. Now, what do we do with the hair we collect? It? It's very super simple test. Some people ask me, so, you know, if I submit a test digitally, how can I actually get the results? Well, you just actually collect the sample, you send it to us and we'll, we'll, we'll have it analyzed and send you the results. It's not like you're digitally sending the hair sample. But what the lab does, they actually analyze the, the hair by using so-called induction plasma method. And I'm not gonna be too technical. You can go to Wikipedia and other sources and, and read about it. But what it basically does, imagine a very highly heated tube by induction, by heating a metal. And the temperatures are become so high that the hair, after it's washed and 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 make sure that make we make sure that it's clean, it's washed and then it's put into this tube and it dissolves into plasma. And plasma basically is the most um, how would I say that uh, dissected. Uh, or most uh, dissolved form of matter. And if we have the plasma, we actually are able to count the atoms of different elements. So we count magnesium or manganese or calcium or, or potassium, all those we can count and we can actually do quantitative evaluation, meaning we can see how much there is. And based on our long-term analysis and many, many results that we collect, we actually set the averages and we know what is low and what is high. And, and you know, that's how, that's how it's done. It's super important to know that this is highly accurate method, but also really inexpensive method. It doesn't cost you more than, a, than somewhere on hundred dollars to, to do good thorough analysis. And in order for you to understand what results you what I love getting when I do the hair analysis um, is a full spectrum of minerals and also toxic elements and some other values. So I'm just going to go through some of these. You can see that these are the nutritional elements. Hi, Pax. <laughs> Pax came to have a look. Oh, my goodness. Do you want to see nutritional elements? Do you? Oh, my goodness. Have you been chewing on shoes or something? <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. Anyway, so you can see that this particular dog um, is out of reference range for calcium, magnesium, sodium, and it's below, so it's low. So you can see this lower column is low, the upper column is high, this is the reference range. This is where we ideally want our dogs to be. Even though nothing is, no dog will, will come back with, with a straight curve in the middle, right? That's not a degree of health. What, I, what I'm saying, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to increase the size of the screen, what I'm saying is that this is pretty clear that some of these are low, some of these are high. For example, we have high cobalt, which is vitamin B12 um, component. It's really interesting because it's relatively low. We have low calcium, magnes mag ma magnesium, sodium, and potassium. We have copper that is slightly high. We have zinc that is slightly high. We have normal phosphorus. We have almost low iron, which is quite common in dogs, despite the fact that some people eat meat, uh, feed them meat. Um, and it has something to do with digestive ability and absorption and all that, and also the meat uh, possibly being depleted in iron. Um, then there's another group or area, and that's the toxic elements. You can see that, that here we have arsenic. Uh, here we have mercury. This dog actually is very, very high in mercury. And it made me puzzled and intrigued. Um, and I will show you some other examples of tests and I will explain what I discovered about these dogs. Now, so this is the, the, the first uh, part of the test results. Um, if you have any questions, keep asking. We'll try to answer as many questions as I can at the end. Now, the other important part is, um, the ratio of some of the good elements and the toxic elements. I told you that toxic and good elements compete with each other. And in this case, you can see that there is, for example, calcium and lead 
compete with each other or iron and lead, mercury and iron, selenium and mercury, zinc and cadmium. So this graph is a little different because the upper section is acceptable. And when the ratio is low, let's say when there's too much lead in ratio with calcium, then we do, just don't have enough calcium and we have too much lead and, and, and it may cause metabolic problems. I'm not necessarily saying that um, if the lead is high, that calcium, if calcium is even higher, that the ratio is fine and everything is fine. What I'm saying here is that if the ratio is disturbed, even if the lead is within normal range and calcium is within normal range, the race ratio matters. The ratio matters as much as the levels, uh, meaning that as soon as you have too much lead in comparison with or in, in, um, in um, the connection with calcium, it's just too much and it can disturb metabolically your dog's health and well being. Now, um, there is the significant ratio. I know that many of you are asking so, is there enough calcium in my dog's food? Or how is the ratio of calcium and phosphorus, right? Well, you can actually find out by taking your dog's hair and seeing what the ratio is. You can see that this dog had not enough calcium in connection with phosphorus. So the calcium phosphorus ratio is too low. Uh, we have acceptable ratio of sodium and potassium. You know, there are good examples when you have a dog with Addison's disease, with adrenal gland the disease dysfunction, you would have high calcium, potassium and, high, and low sodium. And so the ratio would be unusually low and you would actually, well, sorry, uh, yeah, it would be low and you would actually um, probably go to your vet and say, hey, you know, I'd like to check my dog's adrenal glands because something may be going on on that level. Or it may be an indicator, early indicator that something may happen if you don't address it. So again, these ratios of the healthy elements are also important. Uh, everyone knows the calcium phosphorus ratio, but there are other ratios that are super important. Now the test will also give you an idea how your dog does on the hormonal level. It will not necessarily exactly tell you that your dog's thyroid hormone is low physically. You would have to take a blood test and I have another Facebook Live that I've talked about thyroid hormone assessment and how to, how to figure that out. But ideally your dog should be, kind of all these bars should be equal length. Even though if it's a little low or a little high, they should be all equal length. That would mean that your dog's hormonal systems are balanced. Here, we can see that the thyroid gland may be strained, may be affected. This dog may even be hypothyroid. But even if the thyroid hormone is normal, it does not mean that the thyroid function is actually healthy. So this is another way to figure out what your dog's pituitary gland, the gland that resides in the center of the brain, just below the brain, and it governs, it's the general for all the other endocrine glands or hormone, hormonal production. Thyroid gland resides right here. I often talk about collars, how dangerous they are for traumatizing uh, the thyroid gland and uh, collars often are the primary source of hypothyroidism. Remember that hypothyroidism is actually more common in larger dogs. They're bigger pullers. They, they develop more force on the collar. This morning, I saw a guy on a walk, had his um, dog on a leash, and he was somehow frustrated and he started yanking with this leash. And I, I was thinking like, I would so love to actually put the collar on the guy and just do exactly what he did to his dog because this is how hypothyroidism starts. And adrenal disorders, actually, they're becoming more and more frequent because there's so much stress on our dogs and us and the environment and toxins and, and it all piles up and adre the adrenal glands are often respond in, in being either um, overreactive or are not producing enough hormones. Interestingly enough, based on the 
uh, based on the hair test, we can also determine whether our dogs, Paxi, you've just decided to be a little monkey. Um, <laughs> he is uh, he's something else today. Uh, it's been one of those days. Anyway, uh, the ratios of minerals uh, can also give you an idea how your dog does on the level of his endurance or speed. And it's so fascinating when I talk to my clients and say, you know, from the test, it looks like your dog is really good with endurance, but he's not really fast. And they go, how did you know that? Well, it's really simple. You kind of look at the mineral levels and we have these algorithms that give us an idea whether our dog is good fit um, endurance or speed and how he's doing exercise wise. Now, I've done some human testing as well. These are one of my results from the past. Uh, these, ones, these ones are the ones that I had in, the, in another presentation, so I pulled them over. Um, it was really interesting to see where my uh, test results or how my test, what my test results were at that point. I used to use zinc screens in sunscreen, or I still do, and you can see that my zinc was through the roof. Otherwise, I was pretty good uh, here. Um, so I was, I was quite happy. There are some additional elements that we have on the test and also in the dog test. They're not as significant, but sometimes they give us an idea whether there is, let's say, exposure to radioactive strontium, if we eat sardines or something like that. I have another article. I can't really go into detail about that, but you can read um, the article later. So I have some um, cases that I wanted to show you. I would like to, um, I would like to go through them uh, one by one and just kind of give you another idea of what I've discovered in the process of reviewing these results. And then we'll go to questions. Alicia, how is everyone doing? Everyone seems to be doing great. And thank you in advance to the community that have posted questions. It's really helpful for us to learn so that we can address them and more people can learn based on what's on your mind. So thank you. We've definitely great. got someone in the lineup. Great. Um, now I'm just going to take a little, a few more seconds. My, my apology. <laughs> I, I realized that my, I need to open a few different things here. Okay. So uh, the first case is a case of a uh, Roddy. And I'm going to just share the results with you here. And uh, this is an interesting case. Um, it's, if you look at the results first, um, you see that um, this dog actually has quite a bit of excess in certain areas. Like, you know, we can see that the calcium levels are high, magnesium levels are high, the phosphorus is high, selenium, boron, and also mercury is through the roof, through the roof. Um, when I look at this, I go, wow, this dog is definitely not metabolically healthy. I look at the ratios here and you can see that we have iron and mercury ratio uh, really low, like, this is really dangerous. And I would, I'm not surprised that this dog is not doing well. Um, zinc and mercury is also low, sulfur mercury low, and the rest is kind of acceptable. Then when you look at this, um, this dog hormonally, he is actually not doing too badly, except maybe a little bit of adrenal stress. And, you know, and speed and endurance is, uh, is not terrible. So I was, I was really intrigued to see what, what was going on uh, with this particular pooch. And um, I know that uh, I, I knew that this dog was eating homemade cooked, uh, well, cooked diet from Whole Foods that was quite well, well and healthy. But then I discovered that this dog is on huge number of drugs. Uh, Metacom, uh, which is an anti-inflammatory that I have another article about and I don't really like. Um, then gabapentin, which is, uh, which is a medication that is used for nerve pain and, and uh, dogs that are really suffering from discomfort, neurological discomfort or back pain, nerve pain. And then this dog was also on Vanectyl P, which is a combination of um, 
steroids and antihistamines. And it was really interesting to discover that this dog is, um, um, <laughs> that this, this, this person said that this dog has uh, terrible arthritis, had, uh, had this arthritis from very young age, he's been progressing at alarmingly rapid rate. And uh, the owner says, it doesn't really make sense. The other dog in the house is asymptomatic, right? So it would be really interesting to see what the other dog's results are because my sense is that, you know, from the, from the hair test results, like I can see so much metabolic disturbance and so much excess. And I do suspect that this is probably related to the effect of the drugs. And I kind of feel sad. And, and I, I, I think that what I'm gonna to try to do is to actually reach out to this particular client and see whether the dog is still alive. And if he is, we may actually be able to possibly help because uh, you know, I can't really attend all the test results that we have. Uh, we send them back to our clients and community members and they take them to the veterinarians. But if you have any questions, we also um, are happy to answer any questions with regards to hair key tests because I know how important it is. The next dog is a Samoyed and um, and it's a lovely, lovely um, dog. I actually, I didn't really find an exact picture of this particular dog, but I did find a picture of Samoyed. Oops, <laughs> I have a whole bunch of other screens here. So Samoyeds are dogs that um, often suffer from mobility problems. And so I was, I was curious. I wanted, to, I wanted to see what was going on. And um, I'm going to show you the results of this particular pooch when I have them up. And it takes a little while to sw swap the screen, so my apology. Um, so these are the results of this Samoyed, who is um, six years old. And you can see that the test results actually in the nutritional, um, on the nutritional level, actually, they're not too bad. Like, you know, we have slightly lower potassium, slightly lower phosphorus, but you know, the, the curves are quite even. I would not expect any major clinical symptoms, but I do see high mercury here. And when we look at the toxin ratio, again, you can see that some of them are low. So I go, okay, something is going on here. I'm curious to see what this dog is eating. We also see really, really low thyroid function uh, that, that, that is presented right here. So again, I would not be surprised if this dog had some really serious problems. And again, really low endurance. This dog is fast, but doesn't last very long. So going back to, um, going back to um, the test results, or to my little chart here, I'll tell you what this dog's history is. Um, so as I said, six years old, uh, male Samoyed, um, is, on, um, is on a very high end. I'm not going to name because I try not to name. Well, actually in this case, I'll tell you what this dog, uh, <laughs> I did a little bit of detective work and I discovered that this dog is on Honest Kitchen Zeal. And I was thinking, Honest Kitchen, you know, that's a good brand. I, I, there shouldn't be a problem. And I'm not necessarily saying that Honest Kitchen has caused this problem, uh, but it is on in the medical history of this dog. Otherwise, as treats, it gets sweet potato treats and fruits. Um, um, and then I go into mobility supplements and this dog gets really good, you know, glycoflex and zyphlament and it gets liver, liver cleanse and also gets carthrophin injection. So I already knew that there was some sort of mobility issue. And then I go further and I see again, vanectyl P and uh, gabapentin and um, metacam. And then I look at the dye that I just mentioned from Honest Kitchen and it is fish based. And so I kind of look at it and go, okay, uh, 
there are a few things that we could do. Um, and the first thing that I would do is to try to get rid of the toxins in the mercury and switch the, switch the diet from, from a fish to something a little more clean. And I'm not necessarily saying that the manufacturers are actually have an intention to, to um, sell this kind of food. And I'm not even saying that I have a proof that, that, that the mercury came from the food. But if I was a practitioner looking after this dog, this is what I would do. I would actually get rid of the potential source of the mercury, which is fish. And I would also possibly call this manufacturer and say, hey, listen, you guys, I know that you have a really good philosophy and that you probably have the best intentions, but um, you know, I've been seeing these results. Do you wanna check uh, your supplier and see what's going on with the fish, right? So, you know, if I don't have, a, as I said, I never, I never comment on performance of certain products or diets, except if I see connection, I basically just kind of mention it and say, hey, we should look into that, right? And then it's up to the manufacturer or up to the, the food maker to, to take it from there. Um, you know, our priority in Ali Shavel, <laughs> say that we always focus on that is the well-being of dogs and if i'm making decisions about anything whether i'll be politically correct or or open to actually help dogs i will actually be open and maybe suffer some slack or something like that or if i know that certain drugs should not be used or certain approach to treatment should not be used then i will always have to go back to our values and say Dogs are the top priority value. That's why I need to share it with our dog lovers, even though I may get slack from certain people or authorities. You know, this is this is about the well-being of our dogs. So um, interesting, isn't it? Um, I have another really interesting kind of summary here, and I have gotten. I started being really interested in Vatic P. So, what we did. Um, that's the steroid slash antihistamine drug. Um, again, I'm not saying that Van P is causing any problems or disease. I just I'm just sharing what I've uh, what I've discovered in the course of um, this morning. Um, so I'm going to show you the. I'm going to actually do it this way. Alicia, can you see the results? Yeah, I can see the results. Um, is it possible to zoom in just a little bit? Uh, not sure. But you know what? Zooming in is probably not as important as seeing that. So these are just the dogs that uh, we've had on Vanectal P. And, and it's kind of interesting because dogs on Vanectal P obviously have probably some skin problems or some inflammation problems. They are really not healthy. Like that's the kind of last resort drug where nothing else works. It would be really interesting to see whether these dogs had these disturbances before they were put on Vanectal P and whether we could do something about it to prevent them from being put on this medication. But, uh, you know, all these dogs are, have curves that are kind of weird, like they're either high or low. And uh, it would be really curious to see what their curves were before. So I know whether this is the medication or whether these were indicators prior to them put it be put on the medication, indicators of their poor health, right? So I'm just, you, you can see that this is like, you know, all over the place, but it's either high or low. And there is no, there's nothing that actually is kind of ideal or, or close to optimal. As I said, no dogs will be exactly in the middle but it's good to interpret that too. I'm going to just go down to see uh, where the adrenal pituitary thyroid ratios are. You know, interestingly enough, this dog, for example, has really good balance on the endurance level and speed level, and I would expect it to do relatively well on the, on, on, on the energy level and performance. So this is another kind of uh, curious thing, isn't it? Um, I, you know, I'm, there, there's so much information, as I said, we have now thousands of these results, and I only wish I had another lifetime to actually be able to analyze them all. But I will be able to, I will be um, sharing more and more information as time progresses, and um, hopefully, hopefully we'll learn more. And is it possible to let the community know what Venectil is usually prescribed for, if it's a, yeah, a drug yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. familiar with? Yeah, so Vanectal P, I, you know, I've never used that drug uh, because I suspected, um, I, I kind of, 
uh, as a holistic practitioner, I usually got the dogs that were on one XLP and they were really unwell. And I know that combination of steroids and antihistamines is, uh, is, is just really damaging to the adrenal gland system and the body. Um, these dogs lose the ability to actually heal and respond normally to other treatments or nutritional therapy or, or other forms of treatment. So I, I don't use it, but as I said, it's used for skin, uh, skin problems, allergies, um, maybe mobility and inflammation, but mainly for itching, scratching. And you know, often I say that itching and scratching is actually a sign of joint pain and muscle pain, not just skin problems, right? So we have some dogs that go crazy and they scratch and itch in certain area. And it's often missed that they actually have sore joints and muscles as opposed to skin. Obviously they traumatize the skin, but that's a secondary problem. Uh, so I hope I answered that question. So this is the last, um, last patient. Um, and this patient was on natural food with no supplements. And you can see that, oh, maybe you're not seeing anything. Not yet. Ah, <laughs> so silly of me. Um, so you can see that this is actually, uh, this is a, an interesting chart. Uh, definitely if I got this chart, I would say, you know, this dog is not really getting some junky food that is out of balance, but, but overall I see depletion. So these are the charts that I see in dogs that would be uh, on better diet, homemade diet, raw diet, cooked diet, and no supplements. For whatever reason, there is selenium, uh, high, high selenium. Maybe this dog is getting some sort of um, synthetic mobility supplement. Sometimes I see it in low grade supplements, the selenium comes up really high. I really don't know why that is, but I've seen that repeatedly. Um, you know, when I look at the ratios of this dog, you can see that the, the iron and lead ratio is, um, is um, not okay, it's too low. I look at the ratio of the endocrine balance. Uh, this dog is a little out of, you know, I'm not surprised because they're, you know, it's depleted. So it's probably not functioning well on the hormonal level as, as much. And, um, you know, endurance, this dog is probably uh, more of a hiker than a speeder and uh, runner. So um, here we are. I know that I could go through many different tests and we've talked for, I've talked for over an hour, almost an hour. So I'm gonna see whether there are any questions and we may go maybe for 10 minutes over, depending on how many questions we have. Uh, there's so much to talk about. Um, the only thing I wanted to say is that uh, if you wanted to join me in PAX, uh, PAX and I to uh, hair test, there is, um, there is a code on the site that you can use and save $30. Um, I, The reason why I pause now is that I'm not a really good salesperson. I don't really, I always have really hard time between, you know, how, how do people recognize that I mean this really sincerely or I'm trying to sell something? So I tell you how you recognize it. If you feel good about it and if you feel what I said makes sense, uh, try it, see what results you get. If you don't, if you think you're sell, I'm selling, just, just don't buy it. I would, I would be the first one to say, don't buy, don't test. Just don't do it because there's not enough trust established uh, for you to go ahead and, and use this, this method. Um, but you know, you still can call us, email us with questions, no matter whether you're our community member and customer or not. So it's still that, that offer of free help and service and advice is still there for anyone. Alicia, what do we have? Uh, do we have any questions? We do. We have some questions. And uh, just following up to what you said, if someone isn't necessarily in a position to buy right now, be it due to financial stress or they're just not sure because they've only just learned about our products and our company, um, please check out all of the free educational information. We've got courses, articles, all sorts of great tools that are there for you so that you can learn more about helping your dog. Thank you. Um, and with that, I can move on to questions. <laughs> uh, one more thing I wanted to say, you know, uh, I've, I've been doing this, this online work for or, or, or almost 12 years. And um, it took me a really long time to figure out how to be able to help 
without charging people for advice that normally in practice costs money and how to make the team and the company sustainable. And luckily I, I, I have the passion and knack for formulating supplements and uh, they're highly rated and we can power the, the mission of helping anyone who needs the help uh, through the supplements. Uh, they're an important part of the healing system, but uh, you know they're there only for those people who want them and feel that they're really worth the, 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 the purchase. Other than that, thank you, Alicia. We can go through questions. Great. So the first question is from Michael. His question is, do you recommend doing a cleanse before or after a hair cue test, timing-wise? Cleanse before or after? You know, it really depends if you want to know where your dog is now, is at now. I'm really curious. I'm a curious person, so I like to, I like to uh, do it before. And then if it's abnormal, then I'll do it after. If it's not abnormal, I would probably not do the second one uh, until a year later or so. I usually run my test somewhere between six to 12 months. Last year, I had a big aha moment when I run my test and I had high copper, um, which I tried back to eating too much dark chocolate. So I stopped eating chocolate and you know I had a little bit of muscle achiness and so on before I stopped eating chocolate or reduce the amount um, and uh, now it's gone. And I must say that, uh, that it was a real surprising discovery. So there's always something to discover on there. So the answer is run it before if you're curious uh, because that's probably a good, good way to determine whether the cleanse process is actually effective and also where your dog is before you do that. Mm -hmm. but, but one more thing, sorry. <laughs> It's also important to know that a good cleanse also consists of providing the good healthy minerals. So you actually correct the ratios, right? Because if your dog is depleted and you do cleanse, you don't correct the depletion. And the healthy minerals also push the toxic elements out of the body, out of the system. They also block the receptors for these heavy metals and other toxins. So it's important, super important to have the building blocks and minerals that our dogs can make and we can't make. Mm -hmm. And the next question is from Fatima. Uh, the question is, can the age of a pet be determined if the pet is a rescue by a hair cue test or any other sort of test? And if not, as a vet, how do you try to determine the age of a rescue dog if the history is not known? You know, the best, I think that most veterinarians will give you a good idea where the dog, uh, you know, where, how old your dog like, likely is. It's like you look at a person and plus minus you can you can estimate where how old a person is. There are obviously some exceptions. And if your dog looks younger than he or she is, then that's good news. And if he looks older than he or she is, well, um, I think that you will never know, right? <laughs> but, uh, but I think that most veterinarians uh, will be able to give you a rough idea. Just examining a dog, you know, seeing the level of, um, you know, looking at teeth and gums and uh, and uh, muscular strength and, and and the spine and and level of inflammation in the body and so on, and how they move, how they how they function in daily existence. Great. Thank you. <laughs> And the next question is from Alessi. Uh, this is a two-parter, so we'll start with part one. Um, is there ever a time where our dogs can have too many minerals? Like you mentioned selenium um, on one of the test results that you showed. Um, can they be stored in our dogs and cause negative effects in the same way that toxins can, for example? Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's definitely like if I started taking three tablespoons or teaspoons of uh, green men, I, I think it probably would not be good but there's a really big buffer capacity for the body to uh, store or even throw off these minerals the interesting thing is that most people think that if um, for example if we have too many minerals that we will start collecting or making stones in kidneys and liver and i've not liver sorry gallbladder <laughs> uh, but i've seen the opposite actually when i have a full spectrum of minerals um, it usually reduces the incidence of crystals. So to answer your question, it would take a lot of supplementation for you to see the excess. But if I see that there is a curve that 
is above the normal for certain elements, I go, okay, maybe we should reduce, let's say green min, reduce the dose. I actually have seen slightly higher levels of, um, of uh, minerals in little dogs. That makes me feel that, uh, that they, could, they could, you know, get a little less than what the recommended doses are. We currently recommend one quarter of a teaspoon. I think that if it's a really toy breed, like we could go probably as low as one eighth of a teaspoon. I have not seen the one quarter being harmful, just to just to be clear, but it 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 is showing that we may be based on the test reducing the values. And again, every toy breed or every little dog is different. So one will be fine with the quarter, one will be a little over and and it will be very unlikely that they're low. To say that, the best way in little dogs to discover whether you're giving the right dose is to actually do the hair test again, right? Mm -hmm. so this is a little convoluted answer, my apology. <laughs> no, it was great, it's, it's awesome. Um, the next question, so it's a follow-up, thank you for Alessi posting a second question. Um, Alessi has done the hair cue test back in January and is going to do it again later this year. Um, but she'd like to know more about microbiome, which is a pretty popular word in the media these days when we're talking about health of humans or animals for that matter. Um, does the hair cue test give an idea of what's going on in the microbiome or is there a test to learn more about that part of my dog's health? This is so interesting. I, I just actually, um, on Saturday, there is a new blog coming out on microbiome. And it's in connection with uh, one of the most commonly antidiarrheal, commonly used antidiarrheal drugs, which is metronidazole. So keep an eye on that blog or subscribe to your newsletter to make sure that you don't miss it. But to answer your question, there are tests, but this, this particular is, uh, Herkites is not um, gonna give you an idea of what the microbiome is. You would have to analyze the, the fecal sample by sending it to the lab. Uh, and analyze the microbiome. I know that there are some labs that do that, but we have not really explored the, the potential of offering this kind of test to dog lovers. Um, I have had it in my mind, so it's kind of interesting that you're, you're, you're kind of bringing this up. It means that um, it's super important. And when it comes to microbiome, absolutely essential to good health. Uh, that's why I've been so adamant about uh, probiotics and healthy microflora and not using antibiotics and making sure that uh, that we eat the right food you know if you if your dog eats kibble that is sugar based or carbohydrate based uh, the microflora changes within 12 to 24 hours or if you give certain antibiotic uh, like metronidazole it can actually persist for over four weeks and even longer so and and it really it will affect the immune system and uh, the the digestion the crazy bizarre thing in this particular study that I'm going to mention on Saturday is that healthy dogs started getting diarrhea about two to four days after they were introduced to this antidiarrheal antibiotic, which was kind of crazy. Uh, but read more in the article and, uh, you know, uh, we will definitely be exploring the testing more on the level of microbiome and fecal, but um, that's, that's in the future. Great, thank you. And when it comes to toxins, uh, so far you've mentioned things like vaccinations, um, the negative impact that drugs can have, or potentially fish-based diets, or maybe fish oils, um, having mercury being high, for example. What are some of the other causes of toxins being high that the community might not necessarily think about offhand if we dive into drinking water when dogs are outside maybe drinking from a stream or what sort of household cleaners are being used pesticides in the backyard or maybe on a golf course that you walk your dog on um, what are your views or your experience with how dogs can ingest some of these um, bad toxins that are not necessarily front and foremost in most people's minds yeah you know um, um... The world we live in today is um, very complicated. And so is the biochemistry of the environment that we live in or chemistry. Um, hair key test will not, or any test, uh, hair test analysis will not determine the level of let's say pesticides or the level of um, 
you know, a certain toxic ingredient or plastic, plastic derived uh, toxicity, it will not really give you that. But the toxic levels that we are measuring are kind of an indicator of whether your dog's diet is reasonably healthy or clean within the parameters of our current situation on this planet. At the same, at the same time, it is super important not to ignore the fact that our dogs get exposed to cleaning products, our dogs get exposed to toxins in the environment, in the garden. Um, you know, some areas may have certain um, element in excess, let's say in soil or in water, or if a house has copper pipes so that may be reflecting in the levels of copper. Or if I use um, zinc sunscreen, I will have higher zinc than, than most people in the body. Um, you know, the, the rule of thumb is try to reduce the exposure of your dog to any of these toxins, try to use natural uh, cleaners, don't use any chemicals in the environment, don't walk your dog on golf courses uh, or fields that have been sprayed, uh, make sure that you use filtration system, but I actually do not like uh, reverse osmosis. I prefer just carbon filters that are good quality because reverse osmosis actually removes some of the minerals from the water that are good and beneficial as well. So we don't really want to do that. Um, it's super complicated, but I think that this is one of the reasons why instead of running a battery and battery of tests that are hundreds and thousands of dollars in, in, in cost, that's why I just opt with Pax and I and also recommend the liver cleanse and liver tune. In the past, we were using some uh, products for other company, of other companies, but over, over the time, I just decided to um, formulate my own because I felt that um, I can have a, a closer eye on the ingredients and make sure the product is certified organic and fermented. And fermentation actually increases um, the antioxidant ability, anti-inflammatory properties, and the efficiency and effectiveness of um, any herbal ingredient. So that's 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 why I'm so passionate about um, fermentation. Um, yeah. So reducing exposure, you know, living a healthy life as much as we can, and not really discount the possibility that if you buy some sort of treat of unknown origin, that it will not carry um, toxins and impurities. It may. Mm -hmm. I, I basically go back to homemade everything almost. We have homemade treats for packs. We make, uh, you know, we feed him raw food with vegetables that we buy in the store. Um, I try not to give him, I, I try not to actually let and allow other people to give him any treats. We spent um, <laughs> three days in Tofino on the west coast of, uh, of um, Canada. And we get in the hotel and there is a, there is a bowl with three milk bowls in it. And before I was able to grab them, obviously Pax scarfed them down. And, you know, it's not like it's going to make a huge difference once, but uh, I try to reduce those uh, incidents, occurrences as much as I can. They are all great suggestions. Thank you. Um, and the last question is, when it comes to hair cue tests for dogs, have you seen a big difference in processed fed food fed dogs versus naturally fed dogs? Hmm. Uh, when we're looking at synthetic <laughs> vitamins, synthetic minerals and all of the other sometimes nasty stuff that ends up in processed food. Um, is it night and day? Do you see like a big difference in their mineral levels and maybe yeah. toxin levels? Yeah, um, I actually do have some processed food, uh, processed food uh, results. I'll just show you something here if I can. Um, so what I'm seeing usually, uh, the results are a little up and down uh, with regards to, with regards to uh, nutrients. I, I call it I call it the roller coaster ride uh, curve or or graph or chart or results. Let me just show you. I have a few um, of them here. So this is this is one of the you know it really depends. Like processed food is like saying <laughs> which city is more healthy, 
uh, than other, right? Like it's just like you don't really know until you kind of look look at it closer. I think that processed food is too broad of a group to actually come to any conclusions. But what I've been seeing is this kind of roller coaster ride um, chart with the with the normal nutrients. I'm just gonna try to see if I if I have another uh, processed food um, graph here. Um, here is another one. If it's opening, oops. <laughs> okay, maybe here. Um, so again, this is this is another one, uh, but I must conceal the name. Sorry about that. All right, um, I can't really show you any more because I realize that these results actually have um, client names here. So my apology. I hope nobody nobody registered them but uh, it was a good intention of showing you some examples and I got kind of carried away. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this uh, Facebook Live and Alicia, thank you for helping and Christina as well. If you have any questions, you know where to find us, go to peterdubais.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter. I do my best to post uh, useful information, how to keep your dog healthy and we have the same goal, so I, I trust that uh, that uh, we'll come back and and uh, watch and listen and um, and thank you for caring for your dog. Bye bye.